Been working here for the last couple of days actually on the 3520 and the 3046R. I've got my friend Dave here helping me with some service work. Got several things to show you that we've done on these tractors and some kind of issues that we've run into. Let's get started. Hey, if you learned something from our videos or enjoy watching, please hit that like button. Our old couplers on Old Salty here are just that. They're all full of salt. So they just didn't hardly work at all. Now that we've got them off, we've got them loosened up again where they would kind of work. But they're just, they're just full of rust. They're in nasty condition. So I just decided to replace them all. So we've got brand new couplers here. These are the factory couplers from Deere, but I actually didn't buy mine there. They're faster couplings. And I bought mine from boltonhooks.com. Got them cheaper than what you can get them through Deere. They're exactly the same part the part number is listed right here and in the description. And we'll put a link to those on boltonhooks.com if you're interested there. He's got several other faster products that are the same ones that are used on these deer products. It's, it's just a way for us to provide a little bit of a discount over the, the deer part numbers themselves. And it's the same product. And this one's a little bit specific for a couple of reasons. Number one, the thread is, uh, ORB instead of pipe, or most, most places have just the pipe. The other is it has some, some uh, slots in here for the snap rings, right, that, that, that keep it in here. It's a, I would almost call this a bulkhead, but uh, the snap rings keep it, keep it in place there. Mine's a little bit bent up, but uh, Dave and I decided to kind of leave that alone for another day. For one reason, we've got all of these lines there's four lines to run back here and there's a lot of rust on these lines they're a bit fragile at this point and they're over a hundred dollars a piece so i'm trying not to replace them in the event that they break well i'll replace them then but uh for right now i'm just kind of leaving that alone if you got any advice on that you're welcome to leave it in the comments hey i want to show you some lighting these are my new flashers from larsonlights.com I don't know if code TTWT works there or not. I'm actually not sure that it does, but these are specifically made to replace the deer flashers. However, I had some issue with them. Once I got them installed, uh, it threw a code and it basically gave the code that there was no bulb, right? That the bulb was out of the back. I think it's 65 and 67 and maybe 69, then maybe a 63 for the, for the front ones. But we only had problem with the rear two. The front ones, for whatever reason, worked fine but I had to add an extra resistor. So I talked to the owner at larsonlights.com and he sent me an extra resistor and I just wired that in parallel with the bulb itself and stuffed it in there. And by parallel, I mean there was an existing resistor, there's two wires wired between those so that these two resistors were, were side by side. Just to add a little extra resistance, meaning these LEDs weren't pulling enough power for the tractor to recognize that there was a bulb in there. My understanding is that on the 3R tractors, you don't have to have that. So they've got enough of a, uh, enough of a change in the, the software somewhere on the sensing for that, that they don't, they don't need that. But for these 3X20s, you may or may not. I didn't on the front, but I had to have on the back. Oh, wow. Blind me. Yeah, these are also Larson lights and they are crazy bright and yet they don't use a lot of power. Uh, big LED lights, but they're the same form factor as the old lights. Yeah, I'll turn them off. The camera lady is uh, having a fit at this point. I can't see. Notice that the door doesn't hit me. We've talked about the uh, right hand door kit in other episodes, but yeah, I still love that. Dave did a full hydraulic fluid change, a, a motor oil, engine oil change, um, went through all the other service that could possibly be done on this tractor. We have one filter that we're still waiting on, um, an inline oil filter that we'll show you at some point. I needed to do the hydraulic change because I had done that welding there and I had found that hole right in the, in the left transaxle and I just needed to get some of that gunk out of there. So that's what we did there. Let's check out and see what Dave's doing now. If you've watched our videos since spring, you may remember Dave. Dave was in Honduras with us. That's actually when I met Dave was, well, not really in Honduras, but in the airport on the way to Honduras. <laughs> 
Dave's been helping me a few days a week here just to try to help me get going. I, I, I've got so much stuff to maintain and all, there was just no way for me to be able to get to everything. Dave works for a major company here in the area and he does mechanic work for them. And thankfully he works four days a week, 10 hours a day, and that leaves him a couple of days that he can help us. So it's really been good, especially when I have some issues like this. So I was seeing an oil leak that I believe is coming around here. Now, you don't see any evidence now because we washed the tractor up real good and I think most of the oil is leaked out uh, that's around here. So I don't know how, I think there's a seal in here, I don't know how it went out, whether we did it power washing or whether it was pressure due to not having the vented uh, dipstick there, but uh, we're going to take this apart and see if we can figure out anything. So. Looks like we're gonna to have to go in from this end to get this apart. And I don't think I have enough seals to replace that. Really. So we may have to leave it apart for a few days. Garage door over here. Oh! The cats keep taking apart. Here we are. I'll take it over here. Notice that little tiny, yep. Yep. boy that's a tiny seal. There you go. Looks brand new in here. This is the front knuckle housing uh, because this is, I believe, what's referred to as a portal hub, meaning it's not direct drive. It has to drop down through the shaft. And this is a, a spindle that then turns a larger uh, ring gear. And it increases torque but lowers RPM. It's fantastic for tractors. Yeah, we're going to take that bottom cap off there, right? Yes, yes. There's a cap here we'll drop out, and we're going to drop the shaft out so we can get to, if I turn it, so we can get into here where that seal's leaking. Try not to tear too much stuff up doing this. Whatever we tear up, we'll fix or replace. Now, Can you fish that out of there before we go any further? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, great. We've talked about this turf rail, and one of the questions is, how do you handle when you need to take a wheel off? Well, that's what you're seeing today. We've got this little jack right here. Um, it's, I think, a motorcycle jack. And for this situation, we used an extra 6x6 and a 2x here, and we're jacking up right against the middle. Dave's taken an extra step to use a ratchet strap to tie down the other side so that the wheel won't uh, flex on us while we're working here, and that's, that's given us a lot more sturdy of a way to do this. Obviously you can't get to the tires unless you jack it up and this, the folks at Turf Rail actually sent us this jack because, well, somebody came up with that idea. So we got a snap ring under there, aren't they? Sure do. We need some help. There we go. All right. And so I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna just set it on the table right like that. So. Hopefully the cats don't knock it off. There's not too much involved there. Is there a seal in there? No, there's no seal here. No, but this is, so one of these is a thrust washer and the others should be some sort of uh, like shim. So it's at the proper height and level. You just need to make sure it goes back in the same order. I don't know that it would matter that much, but there's a reason that they are the way they are. So best just to, and I believe we should have, we got another snap ring in there. Well, the trick is you gotta you gotta hold the snap ring in there so it wants to come out, but you've got to not pull down on it so much that it that you pull out of it. I gotta say these racks are quite nice because they got good area to store things, and at the same time you can, if you set it up and you get lucky, you can have an oil pan draining down below you. It works nicely. Okay, I'm in. Oh, oh yeah. look at that. Okay, that's the trick, guys. Bring the snap ring around to the open side with straight snap ring pliers. Yep. And then use the angled snap ring pliers to get it out. Okay, right. that goes on top of that gear. Yep. And now this should just fall out of here. 
So I don't know if this is goes, called, I thought this would be called the spindle. That is, that is the, essentially the spindle and it's, it's serving two purposes in this application. Uh, one is, this is part of what this is pivoting on to turn. Uh, and then the other thing it's doing is this is giving power to this front hub because this is yep. a four wheel drive tractor. So then that bottom gear that we already showed you goes right on yep. here. And that's a fairly heavy duty unit. Let's, uh, let's just get our, both of our hands on it. Whoa. Was that the end we wanted to come out? I'm, I'm good with it. You got it? I got it. These all here are spots that can lock in there with yeah. those tabs. They don't have to all be folded. They're all folded so you can get a screwdriver in there and, and flip them and fish them into there. So like that one's tabbed down and that one's tabbed down. So yeah, the white spots our spots where the tabs have been pushed. You're doing good, just keep working harder. Oh. Now, actually, you're, you're, you've worn the edge off of that, which yes. is not encouraging. No. No, that's going to be a problem. Well, through the magic <clears throat> of video, it's only a few seconds later for you guys, but we're three or four weeks later. Um, and all because of this, right here. This is uh, the socket that we needed. And we tried to buy one from AutoZone. In fact, we did buy one from AutoZone and brought it home, but it had six, I don't know, what do you call these? Nubs? Yeah, good enough. And uh, this one has four, so there was no way, if it had eight, we could have ground four of them off, but six, there wasn't anything we could do with that. But you're already done. Yep. Nope. That's all it took, 80 bucks. The John Deere dealer does not rent them. They didn't have one in stock. I guess these front axles never go bad. They didn't even have one that they used. Was the seal in stock though? I don't know. I ordered it online from greenpartsstore.com and I used code TTWT. You knew that, Dave. Yes, I was gonna say it actually. But I don't have to worry about whether they're in stock or not when I order from greenpartsstore.com because even if they have to order them, they just do it. It might take an extra day or so to get here. So we've got a stack of seals and stuff here that Dave's gonna put back in for us. Now that I've seen how involved this is, I regret just diving in on it. I Now I wish I would have done a little more diagnosis, right? I wish I'd have filled it back up full of oil and tried to figure out what was leaking. And, you know, as it is, I just thought, hey, there's oil coming out of the thing. Let's tear it apart and replace the seals and move on. But it is pretty involved. This would be a big DIY project. It's definitely involved, but I'd say we're on the right track with this. There's, there's not much else in here that could really be leaking, honestly. Because yeah. uh, if, it's, if it's not this inner seal, then it's a case issue, which it's a fairly Let's don't talk tractor. about that. Exactly. So I, I think we're, I still, I feel comfortable with it. I think we're on the right track. So we have to take that big washer out next? Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna use your new Christmas present. Look at that. Uh, yeah. With the right tool, it came right out. Absolutely. My request for Christmas this year was some unique pliers. I, so I got a whole set. These are the straight ones. I got some with a curved end, but they all have real long handles um, so that you can reach in a spot like this. And it's not that I even had a task for them. I just have realized that the type of stuff I've been needing as we get a little more involved in some mechanics is just some unique tools, right? Something to, to help you reach into a difficult place and oh, it came out just immediately. Well, and judging off the mud and stuff in there, I'd say that we are... Mostly... We're on the right track. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's got mud all in there, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I wonder if I did that with the power washer or if I did that by getting in the mud in the pond? Uh, mud in the pond. Uh, what I suspect the case here is the seal blew out from that plug on there. 
pressurized it blew the seal out and then you driving through it allowed it to come back in so it's one of those once it's once it's no longer sealing it's going to go both ways so probably originally still the uh, i needed the vented dipstick i think so yes otisinnovations.com is where i'm going to get my vented dipstick in fact i may have one around here you can use code ttwt there i can't say that dave i'm gonna have to get you to start saying code that. ttwt and get a discount um, it's machined aluminum this theirs is so it's pretty fancy kenton was talking it up quite a bit yeah does he have one uh yes yes he does uh said it was quite the thing when he got it we got a new version of that good deal Another part of it with again just a lot of mud packed up in there yeah i'm saying we're on the right track tim all right where's our sledgehammer from earlier sledgehammer now. <laughs> well, sometimes you gotta go, you gotta break it before it gets better. Well, I'll tell you what we could try. Oh yes. Look what I got Dave, his very own. Oh, I'll be darned. It's gonna work. That's impressive. Yeah, I like that. Are you sold? Oh, I was sold a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and no, they're not sponsored. They should be. <laughs> they should be. But they are available on our Amazon store. Nipex Cobra pliers. Is it kind of obvious how those go in? Uh, yeah, just put them back in the same way they came. I would assume it wouldn't make much sense to put them out like that, I wouldn't think. Watch your fingers. At least he uses the $80 tool twice. Well, we should have looked in to see how many of these tractors take that particular socket. I don't know if I can... I don't know if I have that information. I don't think that's, I don't know, it's starting on here. It was going down, and I could feel this going down, so I think you're, you know, it's just got a, probably a good ways to squeeze. Yeah, it's going down. The other trick of this is gonna be, this thing's gonna wanna spin on us when we go to torque it. We don't have big enough vice to lock this thing down. We're soon gonna get to where I'm gonna need to install my vice, Dave. Yes. We need to put that as a project on the list to figure out how I'm gonna install my vice and oh, where. I, I have a plan. I know you have a plan. <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna like the plan, ah! but I have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do, the two inch receiver thing? I like the two inch receiver thing. This table here is essentially about the same width as a truck uh, tow bar or tow hitch. Yeah. And so my thought was that we're still able to have the nice big table over here as we've we can go in and build something that will mount down in here and put a nice two inch receiver right here. And we'll just simply mount that vise to a big old two inch wedge and slides in there, pins it, locks it down. And also you've got a bench grinder we can put in there. There's several different attachments. We could uh, even put a couple of them if we want them at the same time then, couldn't yes, we? Yes, yes, you could put one there and one there. Or the other thing you could do too is uh, Say you've got a tubing bender or something, you can mount that in there. You can make jigs for doing different, you obviously don't do roll cages and stuff, but something like that, you know, if there was something more, a lot more fab work, this table is very nice and you could use it for different yeah. things. The frustrating part to me is this table. I found a place where I could get these for $60 each. And I finally convinced myself to get one. And, you should have and he four. had like 10. Yeah, yeah. Or all 10, actually. Yeah, and but I think you're right. And, and I could then leave it on all the time. I could even, we could even do this on both ends. Absolutely, or yes, yes. I could leave it on all the time, but if I don't want to leave it on, I can take it off and have a nice flat table. To, I, that's probably a great idea. Yeah, or uh, like The a, only risk I have right now is I think the table top is too thin. Well, and, and it is a little thin, but down here, this is, if you feel in there, this is all reinforced in there. There's a piece yeah. there. And that's nice square tubing there. And all we're going to be doing, we're going to tie it into the square tubing rather than the top of the table. Okay. Because even then, if you were to just mount it, the vise to the top of the table, that's thin. Yeah. Whereas that leg is nice and thick. And so I think we'll, 
we shouldn't break anything doing it. Okay, that looks like a, a future project. Yes, for sure. It clicked. And that was 50, right? Yeah, which be fine. 50 takes care of our smacking. I don't have a 3 8 inch drive torque wrench, and so I don't have the right um, resolution here. 50 pounds is as low as I can go, and this one needs, what is it, 30? 30, but it's 30 twice with a smack, so 50 is probably not too bad. No. So when he says 30 twice, the idea was torque it to 30, smack it with a hammer a few times, and then torque it again to 30. So it makes sure it's sealed, right? So we're gonna wing it here. If my uh, front axle messes up again, this is what we'll blame it on, Dave. I'm good with that. There's always has to be something to blame it on, right? We know what we're doing now, so. You know, I think Green Parts Store has the reorder the same order button too. <laughs> how, how many times have you used that? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to use that in this case. Some of this stuff was kind of expensive. But I won't have to reorder the socket. No, we'll have that for a good long time. I am saying if something goes wrong, it's my inability to clean off the, ha the cat hair. Okay, that works. Or you go shove it back on the tractor. I've kind of left you with this. I'd, I've kept my nose out of it. I have no idea what this would cost at a John Deere dealer. I can say that for a beginner DIY person, this is over your head. Um, if you've got some farm mechanical skills, I'm pretty sure you could do this. You do need some unique tools. Um, Obviously this socket, but we've used we've used several different shapes of snap ring pliers. We've used those long uh, needle nose, and I don't know how we would have done some of this without this. No, they definitely came in handy, and the snap ring pliers are going to be a must. Yeah, I actually wish we had uh, a larger variety of snap ring pliers. That would yes. have helped yes. us. Yes, yeah, we're we're definitely so uh, enough to get it done, but not enough to get it done nicely. If you're just beginning on DIY projects and you've got a 3R with a front axle seal leak, I suspect you're going to have to take it to someone or get someone to help you. If you've got experience, then we'll dive in. It's just like any other mechanical yeah. project. We pulled this on the tractor and we disassembled this on the tractor, but I figured it was already on the bench and everything's easier to get to. And now we only got four bolts to contend with other than this thing is going to be, I might have made a mistake here. No, that's... Well, that's a I manageable we had, weight. I guess we had all of the necessary O-rings. Yes, yes we did. These parts breakdowns are incredible. They're very helpful. Extremely helpful. Okay, so we're more worried about the spline to start. Yep. A little lower. We're started, aren't we? Yep. Wouldn't you know what? I didn't try to actually put a bolt down for her. 15 16 Spencer. He goes with English. You're too young to be old school. Uh, there's no metric on the moon. <laughs> Did you say there's no metric on the moon? There's no metric on the moon. I would just like to switch and get her gone. Do you know why we didn't switch? Because of boys like you and me. Pirates. Up. Pirates. Pirates. Uh, the deal is there was a ship carrying all of the measurements over here and pirates attacked the ship. Uh huh. And uh, that's why we're one of three countries that doesn't use metric. Daily Doubtables with Dave. <laughs> Episode one on Tractor Time with Tim. <laughs> pirates are the reason that we don't have the metric system. My Otis Innovation's been a dipstick. 
will prevent one of the reasons that uh, it's potentially blew the seal, but it may not be all of them. Pirates, Dave? Pirates. Christy looked them up. He's right. So today's Daily Doubtable with Dave, you, you actually succeeded. Yep. We'll see how this, we'll see how this goes. We'll keep score in the future. Get a big old <laughs> chalkboard. <laughs> Okay, this project is not a homeowner project. If you've got mechanical skills, it's doable. You'll need a couple special tools, that socket being the most expensive one, long needle nose pliers, or perhaps uh, some fancy or snap ring pliers. Big, big snap ring pliers. Um, torque wrench that'll do 30 foot pounds, which is something that I don't have. Um, I've got a big one and a little one, but no middle sized one. Other than that, it's just purchasing all the seals, which were expensive. Yeah. Um, this was not a cheap project, but hopefully we got it fixed for now. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I thank you, Dave, for helping. Absolutely. Actually, for doing it for me. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription, The Lord knows those who are His, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. That's the first time I've been able to use that on Tractor Time with Tim. The Daily Doubtables with Dave. Oh, we'll get more. <laughs> I found this on the web. <laughs>